Every day, more than 1 million tons of rice are consumed worldwide. It is the second most produced cereal in the world. To meet this high demand, machines play a significant role in the harvesting and processing of rice. But how is white rice produced in factories? Discover how rice grains are milled to transform from brown to white. Rice is the most consumed staple food in the world and an essential part of the diet for over half of the global population. Originally from Asia, it has been cultivated and consumed for thousands of years. Since then, rice cultivation has spread to all regions with warm climates. It all begins with planting. Farmers ensure that the land is properly prepared, level, and weed-free to promote optimal growth of the rice plants. Rice fields are prepared by farmers in July and August, with leveling and application of fertilizer to support healthy growth. The rice is sown between October and early November using an automatic planter. The planter is filled with seeds, and as it moves forward, it automatically and continuously releases rice seeds at regular intervals, ensuring uniform distribution in the field. The operator must maintain a steady and fluid pace to ensure even and uninterrupted sowing. After planting, the fields are irrigated and drained a couple of times before applying permanent water in December. Proper irrigation is crucial, and farmers carefully manage water to cultivate healthy crops that yield abundant rice. The fields are kept flooded for most of the growing season, and concrete embankments between the rice bays allow water to flow from one bay to the next, with farmers controlling the water flow by adjusting gates. Rice grows better in submerged fields as it thrives in wet conditions, outcompeting weeds. The roots of the plants need to remain submerged at least two centimeters while the plant grows above water. Water serves as a blanket to protect the rice crop from temperature fluctuations. In January and February, the flowering initiation phase is critical, as it is when the rice head forms and the seeds develop. As the grains start to mature, farmers close the bays, meaning the water supply is cut off, and the rice crop uses the remaining water to finish growing. Deciding when to block the water for harvest is an important decision. Closing it too soon can reduce the yield and grain quality. Water is only drained from the fields when the weather is very humid, and most farmers store it in reservoirs for reuse. Farmers check the moisture content of the rice using a moisture meter. When the grain contains approximately 22% moisture, it is ready for harvest. Rice is harvested from March to May using combine harvesters. It is essential to harvest with care to avoid damaging the grains. The combine harvester separates the grain from the straw in a process known as threshing. The machinery removes the grains from the stalks and also absorbs some empty husks. The cut and separated rice are stored in a hopper within the combine harvester. Once the hopper is full, the combine transfers the rice to another container towed by a tractor, often referred to as a chaser bin, which follows the harvester while it continues working, saving a lot of time for the farmer. The tractor unloads the rice from the chaser bin into trucks positioned at the edge of the field. These trucks transport the rice to storage facilities. Up to 3,600 tons of rice arrive at this plant daily. Each delivery is weighed, and a sample is taken to control the quality of each batch. The sample is taken from the front part of the massive load, and it is sent to a laboratory to measure its moisture content to ensure it is at the appropriate level. The samples are then examined to check for any insects. A thermal lamp is used to detect any dormant insects. The rice is shaken, and if any moths or beetles are found, the entire 2,500 kilogram load of rice will be discarded. Once registered, the load is released to start its long journey through the plant. It is dumped into a graded opening in the receiving pit to remove any residues and some large stalks. High power conveyor belts transport the rice to the top of 24 meter high silos. Each silo can hold up to 4,000 tons of rice. At this point, the rice's moisture content is around 22%. As it slides down the grate, hot air reduces it to around 13%, making it hard enough to withstand the next stages without being damaged. The partially dried rice moves to the processing area. It falls through holes in perforated cylinders, removing the remaining straw that falls to one side. The next machine sieves the remaining straw fragments and weed seeds. It also suctions the empty rice husks, which are lightweight and easily separated. The rice and empty husks then fall into another machine where gentle suction removes the husks from the heavier rice. However, some grains might not undergo the usual procedure, leading to them being skipped or not properly hulled like the rest of the grains. To ensure that the rice is fully hulled, giant sieves separate the rice while still in the husk. If it is larger and cannot pass through the tray's openings, it is considered whole rice and will be used for cereals or brewing. 
Once the husked rice is separated, it undergoes a milling process to remove the bran layer, resulting in brown rice. This brown rice, mixed with husks and other byproducts, undergoes screening and separation. The rice and empty husks fall into another machine, where gentle suction removes the husks from the heavier rice. However, some grains might not get husked during the process. The brown rice is then sent through a hulling machine, which uses abrasive rollers to remove the outer bran layer, resulting in whole grain brown rice. The rice still contains a thin layer of bran, and this is the result of the process. The brown rice, along with bran and other byproducts, undergoes a sifting and separating process. The rice and empty husks fall into another machine, where gentle suction removes the husks from the heavier rice. Thus, giant sieves are used to screen this rice while still in the husk, because it is larger and cannot pass through the openings of the vibrating trays. Once the whole rice is separated, it is sent through milling machines to remove the bran completely, resulting in white rice. During the milling process, some grains may break, and this rotating cylinder separates the broken grains from the whole ones. Whole grains fall into the compartments of the cylinder, and from there they are put into an internal container. These grains will be used for cereal or beer production. The whole rice then passes through a color sorter where computerized cameras check for dark spots and activate air nozzles to remove any spotted grains. Now the rice is ready for packaging. A scraper moves it along a table and feeds it into plastic tubes. A thermal sealer closes the ends of the tubes, creating bags. These bags are typically made of strong, airtight material to protect the rice from moisture, insects, and other factors that could affect its quality. Whether it's brown or white, this humble grain remains one of the most crucial staple foods on the planet. If you want to know how coffee is made, watch the video on your screen and please like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating the notifications to continue learning. Thanks for watching.